All right, well, I'm Mike Harbin, one of the three co-editors of The Giving Review, and uh, John Cochran is nice enough to give us some time uh, to talk briefly uh, today uh, about something we heard him say on another podcast that we'd like to just get into for a little bit. Uh, John Cochran is a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University out west. He moved there, I think, from uh, from Chicago, where, where you were a, a, a professor at the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. Uh, so we we lost a good Midwesterner, maybe. We'll, we'll ask him that. Uh, and he's an adjunct scholar at the Cato Institute as well. Uh, blogs at the Grumpy Economist. So we'll see if we can get him to be grumpy here uh, today. Let me just describe why we are uh, trying to talk to you a little bit more here. In an appearance on Tyler Cowen's podcast, uh, I think last month, uh, John made an observation about nonprofitdom, nonprofit status. Uh, Tyler and John were talking about higher education, actually, uh, and 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 John, our conversation partner here today, uh, made an observation that might apply more widely. Uh, so, talking about tenure, here's the quote. This comes from your time, right? So, I'm going to quote you, uh, John. Let's get rid of the entire legal structure of the nonprofit organization to start with. <laughs> So that got our attention at the Giving Review. Uh, and then you said, and I'll uh, uh, you know, go to you then, you said that nonprofit status in the U.S. has been, like everything else, uh, horribly misused. Now it's a cover, you said. So why don't we start there, John? F for what might nonprofit status be a cover? Uh, okay. as you said. Uh, all sorts of things. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. And, and I'm uh, so it's something been along on my mind, so I'm delighted to learn of your efforts to put facts and figures to it, which I have been meaning to research, but but haven't. Um, <clears throat> so uh, nonprofits uh, have they do good work, but even things organized as profit-making companies can do good work. <laughs> the issue at hand is the uh, tax and other protections for nonprofits. I'll say if you just look out the window, you can see that many nonprofits have been misused at, for political purposes. So now the nonprofit structure allows you to give money tax deductible to organizations whose primary purpose is partisan political advocacy uh, of um, uh, buttressing political candidates from one side or another. Um, and, and this is uh, sadly the takeover um, I, as a sort of libertarian conservative, I see it mostly on the left, even hallowed institutions like the ACLU have become uh, uh, places for at, you know, anti-Trump hysteria and partisan political advocacy as opposed to defending civil liberties. Um, it is also a massive tax dodge. <laughs> so uh, why does every celebrity have a nonprofit organization? Well, you're, if you die, you're going to pay, pay, give about 50% of your money to the federal government unless you're real careful. And one way of being real careful is to put the money in a nonprofit, in quotes. The nonprofit has to give some money away to charitable causes, but it can, uh, it can employ all of your uh, relatives and no good uh, <laughs> children and grandchildren, aunts and uncles and all the rest at very high salaries, pay for their uh, executive jet travel. Nonprofits, uh, I'll give you two more and then, <laughs> yeah. they have also become, of course, um, Clinton Foundation, uh, to name one on one side of the political aisle, but that exists on both sides of the political aisle. Uh, the Clinton Foundation is, is a classic example. It was used as the uh, slush fund for the Clinton political machine. Uh, you, um, you, give, uh, you have Hillary Clinton come give a $500,000 20-minute speech that goes to the foundation, and the foundation supports uh, her army of helpers when uh, went out of office um, and gives a little money to causes here and there. Lastly, so universities. Uh, one other thing, uh, tax dodge, uh, subsidized tax, tax financed political advocacy and, and slush fund for political characters. The last one it does, even universities, uh, an unrecognized feature of nonprofits. Suppose a university is being badly run and uh, has stuffed with too many administrators giving useless classes and also become politicized. Any private business badly run like that, you can buy up the shares, fire the management, restructure it and make it competitive. Uh, being a nonprofit insulates you from what we call in finance, the market for corporate control. Uh, it's very much easier to insulate uh, ex wildly overpaid management. Universities are basically a hedge fund 
a tax, a tax deductible, a tax free hedge fund, borrowing money, investing it in, in crazy financial stuff, a football team that sort of teaches some classes and pays immense salaries to its, uh, to its uh, staff and its administrators. Well, you can't, uh, you can't take that over the way you could a private uh, business. Uh, hospitals are uh, increasingly nonprofit as well, which allows them to um, re remain uncompetitive. So uh, I think I give you four and I'm going on too long. So- uh, Well, that's uh, perfect. <laughs> Some might say that your proposal uh, mentioned in passing or others that we could talk about short of that would infringe on philanthropic freedom. Uh, how dare you even suggest so. Uh, do you see such a proposal as an infringement like that? Or, or what, what would you say to even a conservative uh, critic of, of, of such a- um, There's a difference between freedom and tax deduction. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for mentioning it. In, in my world, you will be perfectly free to give to any cause you want as you are now perfectly free to give to a political candidate, which is not uh, tax deductible. We just aren't gonna subsidize uh, your freedom to give to uh, particular things or, or other things. Now there is, um, uh, you know, both, I'm surprised you're still employed for saying this and I'm worried that I, <laughs> me too, uh, both of our institutions uh, live off of philanthropic donations. And the, the standard argument is well, but this, you know, we need to encourage uh, philanthropy. To which I would say two things. One, uh, I hope that in, in the new world, genuine philanthropy will, will survive by substitution. People, if you don't have a, a tax dodge and a way of employing, you know, getting around your, the estate tax uh, or, or subsidizing your political causes, you will then give the money you're going to give to things that are genuinely doing good in the world. And I think our institutions are, or at least I have hope. The rest of the world does not have this system, by the way. So philanthropy exists <laughs> when it's not supported uh, by taxes. And the other thing I've mentioned is, you know, progressives tend to be for this. Uh, it is horribly regressive <clears throat> to give tax deductions for charitable donations, because it means the preferences of rich people, rich, let me, let me be more progressive, rich white people <laughs> is what gets a tax. Imagine that we said, you and I, you look, we, we look like they're kind of well-off, middle-aged, rich white people. Suppose that we said uh, every dollar we give, the federal government will on budget write a check to the causes we like uh, of 40 cents on that dollar. And actually federal, state, and local put together, the, the government will tax everybody else and write a check for 50 to 60 cents for every matching contribution for dollars we choose to give to the causes we choose to pick. Uh, but poor people, minority people, no, 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 they, they have to give their money for free. You can, there would be riots in the streets, the inequality, the injustice, that is exactly what the tax deduction for charitable contributions does. So I can put on my progressive hat when I need to. Well, you know, there are, uh, maybe there's an alliance uh, that could be pursued over the next, well, whatever it would take, 20 to 30 years about. Uh, well, this is, and this is in fact a, a point, uh, I, uh, Dick Thaler at Chicago is a regular intellectual antagonist of mine, but this is a point he has made uh, and, and uh, quite, quite forcefully too. So if you're an honest, uh, you know, if you're honestly worried about redistribution, this idea, not just that we're going to redistribute money from poor to rich, but we're going to have the, the system of philanthropy and charity aligned with the preferences of a few extraordinarily rich white people is, is, is uh, shocking. <laughs> well, doing the thought experiment, uh, there would be more LLCs engaged in philanthropy, right? Uh, and there are some examples of that. They might be mostly progressive ones arising out of Silicon Valley, but they would be LLCs doing their giving and paying what I'll call full freight, full tax freight for what it is they want to give to. Uh, is that right? I mean, you want to LLC eyes, which would be something familiar to many in philanthropy, uh, all of giving. Is that, is that, do I have that right? Is that what? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, either you can just write checks if you want yeah. <laughs> without worrying about, uh, you know, the tax consequences of it. Uh, sure, you could structure a philanthropic organization. It could be a corporation, or it could be a LLC, or it could be a partnership. Um, I mean, in my world, we're going to get rid of the corporate tax entirely, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> gonna, okay. that's another issue. Yeah, okay, so but, you want to uh, get rid of a lot. All right. <laughs> okay. we, yeah. we don't have to tie this with that. Also, by the way, nonprofits uh, don't pay property taxes. Um, so uh, this would be 
uh, you know, you're going to, if, if you're going to have huge sprawling grounds and beautiful stadiums, you're going to start paying property taxes on that stuff uh, and, and, and help, thereby help the communities in which you live uh, finance, uh, finance things. Yeah. And now let's say someone agreed with your critique of the- oh, but By the way, the company won't necessarily pay taxes because it doesn't have to make money. If you organize an LLC for the giving away of money, that LLC doesn't make any money, so won't have any corporate tax liability. It'll have property tax liability and, and it'll pay taxes on its employees like everyone else does, but- uh, Yeah. So the, the contemplated solution uh, you mentioned in passing there is quite, uh, I'll say efficient. Some might propose other things, including one that would uh, be responsive to your first critique. Why not just better define in the law what's charity and what's politics? Uh, might that work? I mean, there have been previous attempts. There's not a record of success, but uh, is it the case that the, the, the solution has to be as efficient as yours, getting rid of the whole artifice, the whole structure, as it were? Or could one maybe tinker with definitions of politics and charity and this, that, and the other? Because that's been proposed. Certainly one could. Now, um, as, as a good uh, libertarian, I like to always start with, I, I think it's useful in our public policy debates to start with what is the right answer? Because we all too often, we say, well, well, we, we can't possibly do that. So let's start tinkering with the politically possible. And there's a Senator from Iowa who will vote against this. So we have to blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's in the end how stuff gets done. But if we never state the desirable thing, we'll, we'll never get there. But of course, yes, uh, we could easily reform in lots of ways. Uh, one of them is to really be much more sticklers about political activity for uh, charitable things. Now, the problem is that uh, we live in a democracy and uh, watch the tax code. Democracies are responsible, are responsive to their constituents, especially wealthy constituents who go to uh, Washington armed with all sorts of requests for things. Uh, so any, the tax code becomes an obscenity quickly uh, as the nonprofit code has. So the problem isn't so much one of Oh, let's get together and just fix this by make, by getting rid of political activity. Of course, you know, our especially where I live, I'm, I'm more attuned to lefty stuff because I live in California. But our plutocratic, uh, progressive techies want very much to give gazillions of dollars, and they want to fly to Washington and get tax deductions for it because they'd like to, you know, they like tax deductions. That pressure will be inevitable, and and America is very partisan and political, so. You know, take unions is a good example. The purpose of government employee unions is to uh, take money from people and force it into currently Democratic Party politics. <laughs> so uh, the, the force for um, this kind of deduction is going to be strong and it will, it will resist. You know, we, we can't reform most basic obvious things like the Jones Act. Sorry, that was on my uh, list this morning. So reforming something with so many, this is the vested interest. And man, every university president will be out screaming how this is the end of higher education and opportunity in America if we get rid of this, every wealthy donor. And part of the problem is, is we love to have this pretense of very high tax rates that rich people don't actually pay. So we like to say, oh, we're the great redistribution social justice America. Our tax code has a, at least a 70% marginal tax rate on high incomes. But people don't want to actually pay 70%, so we hide it off in the weeds. Uh, so in, unless, I think politically, getting, um, getting people to give up that tax break would have to come with a, what we all know we also need, a widening of the base, immense simplification of the tax code, and, and lowering of the marginal rates. So we don't have that pretense of, of, we're, we're, uh, of we're redistributing. So yes, uh, I think anything we could do on the margin would be good. And I think there might be bipartisan ways of doing that. Unfortunately, right now, most of the tax deduction benefits, in my view, benefits a progressive costs. It's, it's kind of funny that the progressives are all worried about the Koch Foundation and right-wing money in politics. All the money in politics is, is, is cloyingly left-wing. Um, so I think, you know, when actually facing uh, the reality of, of losing their subsidized base, it'll be very hard to, to uh, get genuine reform. In fact, in those little weeds is where any reform will be undone. You and I could try to pass, let's get rid of the charitable deduction. And well, 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 but, but we need it for community-based organizations that are you know, genuinely providing services to disenfranchise, marginalize, whatever, and then the whole thing falls apart.
Great. Well, you know, unless you have anything you might want to add, John, why don't we end the conversation there? Uh, we could go forever. Uh, keep up the good work. 